All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Beer and Bastards. Our first episode was so good, so they decided to sign us for a second episode, but we had to guarantee that we'd bring some gals on. So this episode is unofficially known as the Beauties and the Bastards. Oh, it's Michael Lee, <laughs> Lucy Steigerwald, and Josie That's Wales. A dynamite well, start. The, uh, that we have. Of will. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. Here I am. Yeah. We so. lost you. Oh, my, oh, was I gone? Oh, geez, that's in, that's that's embarrassing. You were gone. Usually it'll happen. <laughs> it happens. It already, it doesn't, see, even this doesn't like me. Okay. <clears throat> Today we're going to start off. We got on, the introduction out of the way, though. I wanted to start off with this whole celebritarian movement. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't privy to it until about a month ago. I didn't really know that this happened. Um, and then, um, you know, I started hearing some names and I, they kind of, I, I, I knew I heard them from somewhere. So I figured it was online somewhere, or Facebook or Twitter or one of these things. Um, and I was wondering, I know some of these guys are characters, certainly Chris Cantwell and Brad Spangler, guys you've probably heard of recently. Um, I want to start with the gals. I want to know what you think, specifically Lucy. What do you think about the celebritarian movement? What do you think about some of the more, I don't know, I want to, I want to be mean, unique characters? Do you think they help or hurt the libertarian movement or the liberty movement in general? <laughs> well, child molestation hurts it, I would say, as <laughs> a general rule. So you're talking about um, Brad Spangler. So I think Spangler's out. Right. But it's Spangler's out because th th we have different concerns, which is, again, child molestation. Um, but he didn't initiate force. We're talking force. Cantwell level. He didn't initiate any uh, force. Oh, my God. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Well, that's though. what he said. No, he there was did. no initiation of force, therefore it's okay, and everyone's a statist. That, that's, yeah. Well, fine. We're all statists because we're gonna say don't molest your daughter. That's yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm making that stand. That's my that's my statist stand right there. Okay, now here's my follow up question. Um, we talked about we talked about okay. this a little bit. Do you think it's ser Do you think that's a serious thing, or do you think he's using? I don't know. He's pushing the envelope to get more viewers. Uh, you know, to get more, uh, to get more traffic, basically. You know, so people read his stuff or listen to his show. Or do you think that's like an actual thing? Like that—that's true. I—I—I I, I don't know. I'm—I'm I'm more towards the former. I think it's a marketing ploy. What do you? Well, think? Well, supposedly his daughter endorsed, said that it was true, but also to leave her alone for obvious reasons. So I'm right. It seems to have actually occurred. It wouldn't be too hard for her to for him to tell her to say yes, though. I mean, I, why would you say that? On, that unless that would imp that would imply that they're both total lunatics, which in a way that's less credible than he actually molested her. If they're I'm both working, that's, that's, Occam's Razor says no, dude. Occam's Razor says that was actual child molestation. I'm certainly leaning more towards the Looney Tunes aspect of this thing. What do you think, Josie? Do you think it's a marketing ploy or do you think it's like an actual, like they're just no. really just... I think I think this actually happened, and I don't think it's ridiculous to think or to for there to be bad people in the libertarian movement. A libertarian doesn't make a good person. Mm -hmm. um, some of the shittiest people I've ever met in my life are libertarians, and I mean, it's, yeah, no, I wouldn't say are, that. Um, so that's unfortunate that you had that experience. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I did have some pretty interesting experiences, and and don't get me wrong, I have some great friends, and I, I said before I had a total 360 where before uh, I really, you know, my first experience, uh, opinion was that it was a bunch of just narcissistic, crazy maniacs and, you know, out for themselves, and then all of a sudden all of these people were watching my YouTube videos, and I, ma you know, made some really good friendships, and then I was like, oh, cool, you know, they're not that bad, and then I started, you know, meeting more and more and more. Uh, and and then uh, I, I went, and now here I am a celebritarian <laughs> hater. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so you you uh, in any case when it comes go ahead. So you immerse when it comes to Brad. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Dad. Go ahead. No, no, no. You can go ahead. So what you're saying is you immersed yourself kind of in the celebritarian culture, and it kind of you got in there and it kind of chewed you up, and it kind of spit you out. You weren't really you weren't really that into it. You, you saw the dark side. I would say. I would say it was the opposite. I wouldn't say it chewed me up. I would say that uh, Not a the negative more way. I got to know people, 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, it it definitely made me jaded. And, and there were some of my friends who were like, you're not the same. And then it was kind of, and this is after I left, the, like, the scene, the you know, the celebratarian scene, I guess. Um, and I was just bitchy and miserable, and I hated the attention, and I hated having people commenting on, as ridiculous as it sounds, I hated it. Even when they were nice. I'm like, stop it, just shut up and leave me alone. And they're like, but it's Facebook. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> but, oh, I got uh, it. So you had different I know. I'm like, I'm... Perhaps. You had different motives going in than everybody else, perhaps. Like, I wanted to reach uh, people who uh, are thinking inside the box and who worship this government that is oppressing them. Like, I wasn't in it to kind of, I wasn't in it to just make money off my YouTube videos or, I mean, which, it's not a bad thing, but I wasn't in it to get, to be a big fish in a little pond of just idiots circle jerking each other over and over, uh, and then being like, oh, I'm the biggest fish in this teeny tiny pond. Awesome. I win. Like, I didn't like that feeling at all, right. to be honest. So that goes back and I felt like it was ineffective. That wasn't my goal. Right. So that goes back to the question I kind of asked Lucy about, do you think it's a marketing ploy? I think a lot of this stuff is these guys find a niche and they exploit it. And they do it for, it's not a bad reason to make some money. I, nothing wrong with that. And they see a niche in the market and they take it. That's capitalism. I love that stuff. Good for them. But I mean, I'm talking, do you think it's good? I mean, I know I'm getting jaded by libertarians, certainly online. I don't think that they exist. Like, I don't think it's, you know, cosmic libertarians. I just think it's on it's on social media. They all coalesce around these characters. And like you said, you hear them commenting. I mean, I run a page. I have friends that run pages. And these libertarians just come at you and they gang up on you. A lot of like the radical libertarians. And they're all... Uh, sycophantic uh you know following certain personalities and it gets a little weird sometimes i'm not gonna lie i've got some weird messages in my inbox um oh so, yeah right yeah it, it's insane i can't even i don't ever check like my facebook messages i rarely check mm -hmm. uh because of that uh but uh it is it's a very weird like i just started deleting every single person i would post a like a dog video and there would be 130 comments about how, you know, the owner is oppressing the dog and restricting its freedom because of the leash and the that and the debating, you know, right. all these insane philosophical intricacies. And then um, I made a joke about Stefan Molyneux once. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I have oh. never been so, <laughs> oh, the vitriol that came. It was like I had, it was like I had spoken at, I don't know. It was like a religion. It was there. It's it a is. crazy it's cult. A, it's, that, a you cult. Know. it's a cult. It's a cult. Yes, I totally agree. It's, it is. It's a cult of personality, yes. and it is. And it's it's the same when I spoke out against Cantwell. It's the same when I um, wrote my little uh, how to be seven steps, uh, how to be a celebritarian, mm. uh, which was totally jokingly. It was a joking article, uh, just taking a stab at. Uh, a couple celebritarians that I had had differences with because I kind of said, you know what, I don't like because everyone's just infighting with each other about who's better and who's this and right. who's that. And they get lost in, in any case. When it comes, I feel like, with, well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it is ridiculous. And um, you know, I, I make one kind of post, and then all these people are like, well, stop talking about it and stop fighting, and then they'll go away. I'm like, I made a 30 second Facebook post, can't well. His blog is literally dedicated to bashing people. If you go through and look at all of his yeah. blogs, every single one is dedicated to bashing a person. Right. Not an idea, not a, right. I mean, and he used to have some okay, right, I'm going to say okay writing, um, but I will absolutely 100% tell you that he's all talk and no walk. And we'll, we, I, I don't know, I feel so horrible getting off subject with it, but. Yeah, this is a good place to vent. Uh, he's definitely a fraud. Yeah, and well, I, I mean, I've said it before. It's he's just, space. he's a fraud. It's I mean, space. yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> it's a safe place. Uh, he, calls me, he calls me a flake and a fraud because, you know, I lived with, I was his roommate for like three weeks. Two weeks of that I was gone uh, traveling. But it was, I was so just disgusted by a lot of the things that were happening. And then he said, he, there was a blog about it. It sounds so confused to say. He told me and everyone in Keene, New Hampshire, that he was in love with me and this and that. And it got really weird. So kind of like some of the things uh, I said and that was, before we got on the air. Yeah, no, way weirder. Like Even more weird. Like he threw temper tantrums. 
Weird, like, had temper tantrums, threw shit, stormed out of the house, slammed the door, craziness. So if I had to so, ask you right uh, now who has a better chance, me or Chris Cantwell, who wins? You totally win. Yes. All right. I want to ask my... Oh, no. to be proud of. No, that's it. That's, that's really, good. We stopped that's there. That's the standard set. Yeah, yeah. I just, I do just want to say that I don't think the, I don't think, uh, you know, Spangler Gate is an inside job. I'll tell you that in <laughs> okay. any way, shape, or form. I appreciate your <laughs> that makes no sense. Spangler That's some Gate. Building seven but... shenanigans. That's not, you know. <laughs> All right, I want to get Mike. Yeah, no, I, th- I, I, I think it happened. I want to get. Wait, wait, but because I, I just want to say one go thing. Ahead, go ahead. Did you see how it has to do with that? And I'm sorry, and then we'll go to Michael real okay. quick. Sorry, I'm not moderating, and I know this, but okay. did you see his post that said, "What? Yeah." <laughs> I have one. I'm just kidding. I, what? I'm just kidding. I'm drunk. No, I know. Well, join the club. Uh, <laughs> but continue. Uh, he posted again before he deleted his account, saying, "Hey, I had a, a psychiatric breakdown, and uh, said some crazy things, like raped my daughter." LOL, JK. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay now. I'm just in a homeless shelter being treated. What? Yeah. Why at a homeless shelter? They have psychiatric care. But why at a homeless? <laughs> I mean, like, how did? The ambulance picked you up and took you to a homeless shelter? Uh, he lost me there. It's well, the, I guess the the speculation on that is that uh, the Can- Kansas City Police Department is it Kansas City? Yeah, no, I don't know. In any case, uh, they couldn't do anything to him because of the uh, statute of limitations. It had been too long since the crime that he confessed to committing. So got it. They, they released him. They released him to a very professional psychiatric care at a homeless shelter. So essentially, what you're saying is statism saved his saved his life. You know, the whole statue of limitations thing because of the state. Really? Got it. Yeah. I guess you could you could deduce that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mike. <clears throat> with that, hey, without government, how would the state or how would the molesters go free? No, right. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm done. <laughs> Mikey. You're really busy making really interesting posts that everybody really likes to see, more so than an unbiased America, which does a really poor job of that. Um, what do you think about the uh, celebritarian movement? What do, you, do you think it's good? Do you think it's a net positive? What are your thoughts? And, and if you do, who do you think are the shining stars? Who do you think is, it, would be a good leader for such a movement? Well, well first of all, i got people in the chat that are calling you and uh... – and uh, everybody else out because apparently I'm the only one that's drinking. Okay. I, I told if, them that you have vodka. If you call uh, drinking a Chimay out of a curved glass drinking, then uh, no. This is what I'm drinking. Okay. This is from I Costco. I would be drinking, but Which, I don't have this, any drink. The show is called. This is, from, this is from Costco. It's a good this America. Is from, oh, it. It, used to, it used to be America. <laughs> There you go. No longer America. Anyway, uh, Outsource. And Lucy doesn't have to drink. So oh. you're good. I, you're I good. want to. You're, you guys are making me want to drink. Brad oh, Spangler is making actually, me want to drink very heavily. But I don't yeah, have anything that's actually more right manly now, than the drink that Michael has. But let's go back to you, Mike. <laughs> Can my we? previous question. Never mind that glass. I don't know why you're drinking out of that glass. Is it like, is it, is it aromatic? Is it wine? Are you trying to turn beer into wine? Is this like a movement? Towards beer is supposed to be warm. Wait, let's see it again. Let's see that again. Yeah, let's bring that Let's see it again. Let's see it again. Whip it out. Whip it out. Whip it out. Whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> Rephrase. Rephrase, please. It is pretty. It is pretty. Right. Phrasing. <laughs> oh. Actually, that's pretty. That's pretty good. That is. Yeah, that's a fine beer. Yeah. It's a real premium. You're a real bourgeoisie capitalist. I get it. No wonder why you're on the show. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Do you, I'm reading Kevin's stuff. He's yelling at me now. What do you, now? Who do you think? Read it out loud. <laughs> do you think it's a good po- like a, it's a positive? Who's a positive force in the celebritarian movement, Michael? Go for it. Tell me. Well, I mean, the most the most positive force in the uh, celebritarian movement is Matt Palumbo, and unfortunately, he just couldn't be on the show tonight. I would agree uh, with that. Maybe the most negative at the at the other end of the spectrum, uh, it it might be. Uh, Kevin, who's the most negative end of the celebrity oh, spectrum from unbiased guy. America. But it's not good with that guy. It's You're right. Yeah. I agree. I mean, that I guy makes that Molyneux guy look like, uh, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan. You know, the great community. Yeah, you got to define – You got to define honest, your terms. I don't know what the big deal is. I mean – How so? Hold on, Lucy. How so? I think any – Well, like, 
okay, so celebritarian, when I like some of my libertarian cronies joke about it, it's supposed to be kind of a pejorative. Like my friend Ryan was calling me a celebritarian to make fun of me. Cause it's, so it's a negative you know, connotation. Like, it has a negative connotation. So it implies a shallowness. It implies you're not a scholar and you're not necessarily even a journalist or I don't know, on Fox News. Like it, it, to me, celebritarian sounds really, really pejorative and also sort of like, ooh, you're a celebritarian in this movement of eight people, you know, and you think you're, all, you're hot shit and you're not. So, like, I really wanted to, I, I want us to define what we're talking about here. Okay, besides I like just that. libertarians you're... we four have heard of. Right. That's pretty... I, totally, I totally agree. I, I totally agree. That is exactly how it looks. Well, let me go. Or, or well, how you just said. It. So, I never saw it as a, I, like, I'm not that steeped in the, the celebritarian thing. I didn't, never really saw it as a negative or a positive connotation. But now that you bring it up, I yeah. can, un, I, do you think it's justified that people say, celebritarian is is a negative that it lacks substance do you think do you think that's justified or there's validity to that lucy um you can use it for certain people i think i first heard that this uh portmanteau from angela keaton who was just trashing almost everybody in her delightful angela keaton way um i mean if you want to call like, i'm going to keep picking on cantwell because he's a certain type not only is he an asshole, which he admits and thinks that makes it okay, um, but he, <laughs> outsiders have not really heard of him, you know, that much. He's not on Fox News. He's not writing stuff besides on his own blog. Um, and he has this aggressive purity thing happening where he's obviously not interested in converting <laughs> anybody to libertarianism who isn't already a true believer. And his whole shtick is like, I'm the purest man in the world. Here I sit being pure, and nobody gives a shit about that except for us. And you know, he's clearly tried even our patience. So. Okay. So I think for someone like that, it does fit. For like, and some of the Rockwellian people who are really just like, all they're doing is whispering to each other about how like, more like trees in magazine. Am I right? Okay. So like, it, I think it. I think it is a bad thing. Okay. It sounds. It's, it's shallow and it's extra insular. I think. Let me. I want to ask a broad, like a broad question for all of you guys, and I'll, we'll go one at a time. Do you think like Steve Horowitz? Or, an... Go ahead. You got a question? Go ahead. Shoot. Sorry, I had an answer for the last one, if that's okay. Oh, shoot. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I think it, what I think what has happened to the the word celebritarian is that it has started to apply to anyone who's gotten any kind of attention for what they say. Uh, mm -hmm. And anyone who has gained any type of following, like like a, a good following and a lot of comments and likes and shares and this and that. And I think there are some people who are, you know, in it for the right reasons and are genuinely out there trying to change minds and not just being an attention whore. Right. Uh, so I, I think it, and, and to me being, and I've said it so many times, <laughs> to being called a celebritarian is one of the worst insults. Right. to me in the world right. and a lot of people still call, yeah, they call in the whole world out of every insult uh, that's the worst. but it's it's yeah, a really bad rough. one and i get really I, I i get <laughs> i get really offended when people say that uh just because of the the connotation that it has but then again the, there are those celebritarians who are out uh just to you know, gain views and, and gain attention from a very small group of people, and never ever do anything to affect the world outside of the couple thousand people who actually understand. I would say, yeah, thousands, many thousands of people actually understand um, the, the basic idea of freedom. And right. What it so means. you're going to motives again, and that brings me back to Mike. Do you think anybody has good intentions with this, with, uh, you know, I mean, let's look at like, say, Austin Peterson. Do you think he has good intentions? Do you think he's just looking to make a quick buck? What do you think? I mean, the guy's a good marketer. You got to give him that. Well, I, I think Austin has good intentions, but I think Austin is also concerned about making money. And, uh, and I don't fault him for that. That's, that's not a problem. But I, I mean, anybody, you could say that about anybody that makes money. And you're always going to get those accusations if you gain enough of a following that, uh, well, he's just in it for the money. And I think I think the one thing that 
that you can fault Austin on is the fact that he has like the clickbait websites like Liberty, uh, Liberty Viral or whatever that website is, where it doesn't have any content that's actually relevant to the Liberty movement. Right. So I can see why people say that about him. I mean, I I gotta hate. Well, I mean, I, I gotta. I honest, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I really don't understand uh, why there's any sort of negative, uh, you know, debate about celebritarians. Just because I mean, there's uh, there's people in any political movement. Uh, the the page that I deal with every day, and being liberal, Matthew Desmond runs that page. He's a celebra uh, celebra liberal. I don't know how you would say it. <laughs> That's a hard uh, one. He actually. He actually, worst uses worst. An he actually uses an alias. Uh, his real name isn't Matthew Desmond. His real name is Matthew Carey. So if you can't even stand behind your own content with your real name, you know. Right. Now, Lucy. What, what do you actually? Uh, go, what do you actually accomplish? Go, now, Lucy. I saw you making a couple of faces during Michael's uh, commentary. That's just what happens when someone mentions Austin Peterson. Okay. I, I well, face. now let's hit on that. <laughs> I, I I mean, to, in <laughs> my was... view. In my view, I think he does a good. He certainly did a good job with the Libertarian Republic, uh, insofar as it's been around for three years. I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't. I don't know if it's really substantive. I haven't read a lot from the Libertarian Republic. Um, what do you, What do you think? Well, Liberty Virus already annoyed me because any URL that demands sort of like this is clickbait and you will share it, like out of spite, I don't want to look at it. And I think that Austin Peterson should ask permission before he puts people on gross lists. Because okay. uh, some people don't want to be on gross lists that he makes. So Liberty Viral is like an aggregator? It kind, just takes kind of, it, just, it takes people's stuff and then it, it aggregates it into one site? How does that work? I don't, I don't. Uh, well, I mean, he, he, his, I'm just, I'm bitter about his, um, his trolling works with his hottest libertarians list because it's, gross to put someone on that list without asking them which is what he did to me um and to many other people okay it's just the level of trolling like i think austin could do better like i know he's not a moron but i've right. debated with him mostly about war stuff a little feminism mostly war stuff and he's he, just he, his method of interaction gets very trolly and right. very purposefully sort of like he can't like he won't just engage you honestly a lot of the time and that drives me kind of nuts. I I yeah um, okay I've seen that so. I've I've also seen him and I, Michael's brought this up is that sometimes he'll take somebody that's I don't know trolled him or bothered him and they, he'll like put him on his page and make it kind of mock the person and it's generally somebody that yeah I, I don't know I wouldn't mock I I'd feel I don't I I couldn't do that I don't know it's kind of like almost bullying to a degree I see him put people up on his page. I think he could do thing better. Is, right I agree. He's a smart guy. It's a total ad hoc. Right. It's a, total, it's a total ad hoc. That's what it is. I mean, he takes people that disagree with him, and he he puts them up on the page, and he attacks them personally. Mm -hmm. He'll win the debate with your ideas. You know, if you can't win the the debate with your ideas, then you might as well shut it down. No, that's, I agree. That's what I, the problem I have. I don't know. I I'm fifty fifty on it. I think some of it's not right. I think the other part is kind of it's smart. You know, insofar as what he wants to accomplish. I, I, he makes some good points on his he page. He generates interest that way. No, definitely, and I think that's his main goal. I think we don't look at the market aspect of this enough. I don't think we look at the incentives that are created oh, as yeah, a market I mean, out there. Go ahead, Lucy. <laughs> I, I, I acquiesce to the to the market forces that have made him like good at mm -hmm. page views. Like clickbait works. I mean, if you do it right, and he's doing it right, it's just. It doesn't make me respect you if you right. if you're that clickbait centric. I agree. I'm like, I agree. Look, my it page, doesn't mean he's right. you know a monster, but it doesn't right. make me respect you as a thinker or a communicator. On my page, we deal with like I'll write about judicial review or the history of judicial review. It's not really necessarily getting a ton of clicks. You know what I mean? Or I have another admin, Luke, who puts on you know he's uh, yeah. in philosophy and he's putting stuff on metaphysics. It's not exactly. You know, riling everybody up, but at least we stay. You know, at least we Not stay so so, somewhat honest. You know, to a degree. And I understand why these guys are doing it. I want people to see more of my content, but at the same time, I don't want to compromise. You know, compromise necessarily who I am. But I don't know if Austin Peterson's done that so much. What do you think? Well, like, you're kind of uh, you're kind of against this whole libertarian movement, uh, Josie. Do you think there's any positives? Do you think libertarian girls are positive? What if Julie Borowski a positive? I mean, I see them. As somewhat positive, certainly Julie Borowski. Mm -hmm. See, I wouldn't say I'm against uh, the celebratory movement is very general. I think there 
are a lot of individuals um, within the celebritarian category who approach things in many different ways. I think Julie Borowski's great, honestly. Out of all of them, I think she's one of my favorites. I, agree. I love the way that she she handles. Uh, absolutely, uh, I think that I love the way that she handles criticism, trolling. Um, she, you know, she she's really out there. She's funny. She's cute, but she's extremely intelligent. Right. Um, I I think that that's a huge positive. Uh, I I think that the uh, I would say, <clears throat> when it comes to the celebratory movement, I, I don't know how to, positive in what way, do you mean positive in like waking other people exactly. up outside of the liberty it's, movement? Yeah, and spreading the word, okay. I mean getting the word out there, yeah, you know. Then, then some people are amazing at it, some of the okay. people who are, you know, celebritarians are amazing at it and great at it, and then there are the, you know, the people who are who will turn, uh, quote unquote, I hate the word status, it's extremely divisive and it has such a negative connotation. Uh, but there are, you know, there are a lot of people out there like, you know, you have Cantwell and uh, who else? I pretty much, I, I honestly think Cantwell is, is, is the main one who will turn off anyone uh, immediately, not anyone, because different approaches work for different people, but who will turn off uh, most people who are even thinking about looking into uh, libertarianism or uh, you know thinking outside the box and, and disregarding government because the dude's a fucking douche, man. Am I allowed to say fucking? <laughs> I, you already did. It's not like you're gonna bleep it out. You did. You know, it's it's. it's that's Is there okay. a dump button? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I agree. I agree. I think. Also, I think Jeffrey Tucker is good for, like, the anarchist movement. I don't think he's self-serving. He's a nice guy. Um, he always writes... I, I like Jeffrey Tucker. Tucker right. Precious. He's good. I mean, why can't people... I mean, just take his approach. He's, a, he's always been a nice man. I don't see him out there throwing bombs. I see him making arguments. I don't agree with his arguments. In fact, I think some of his arguments on, on law are, are really misguided. But on, certainly on the market, he has some, he has some good... Uh, you know, arguments, and he re he keep really keeps to himself. He's always polite. Um, Steve Horwitz too. I follow him. He's always polite. Has a good argument. Um, maybe because these guys, I don't know, are, are more so in academia. And Jeffrey Tucker, I know, works closely with Yal and so on and so forth. But I just don't know why more guys can't be like that. I guess I do know why. Again, go back to the market. There's a market for Cantwell. There's a market for Spangler. Things like that. And um and and that's why I I, admire... I don't go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't think Spangler has a any kind of like market at all. I don't. I don't think he he's ever. I think he got a a lot of attention. It, it's one of those things where like that was like five minutes of infamy for him. Yeah. I don't and, know, Josie. I'd go through your uh, inbox and then tell me there isn't a market. Look at some what some of these people are saying out there. You know what I mean? Well, some weirdos. They love that stuff. And they're all online because you're not going to find it anywhere else, you know? Well, and what's, what's interesting about uh, the libertarian movement and uh, the appeal, uh, you know, anarchy or anarchism or whatever you, volunteerism, like that appeals to a lot of sick-minded and dangerous people because they kind of want, they don't think about uh, what would happen if, uh, you know, unicorns sprung out of the ground and all of a sudden there was no government tomorrow right. kind of a thing. Right. Uh, they, in their mind, their obstacle to being shitty and violent is the state and being punished. Right. So they're attracted Damn. to this so they can, <laughs> so they can do it. <laughs> so they can not, and I'm not saying everyone, I'm saying that it, it will attract those types because they can do it freely, they think, without any repercussion. So it's, I, I honestly feel like that it, it does attract, and, and then again, there are clearly a lot of very sick-minded and violent, um, you know, government worshiping, worshiping people as well. But uh, I'm being liberal yeah. specifically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, okay, you don't. <laughs> um, okay, I have to take a tan. I want to take a tangent from what Josie said because I've realized that I totally trust libertarians I don't know that well slash kind of know from the internet and I think I trust them more than I would trust like your average person internet libertarians in my experience 
Well, people, like, if I'm meeting them, if I'm crashing on somebody's couch in my life, and I know they're libertarian, maybe I knew them a little on the internet, but maybe not that much, it's because the entire point of their beliefs is, like, thinking about force all the right. time. But I can totally see why, by Josie's point, that there would be people who, their barrier to being awful is the state, and they want to get rid of it. But in my experience, thankfully, in my life, it's always been like, oh, this this dude spends half his life thinking about not hurting people so right. it's actually pretty cool no i get what you're so saying so i have the nicer version of what she's had i right. guess that's I, a bummer I, though well and i will rebut that um respectfully because i think that's that's so great that you had that experience and i've had that experience with a lot of people uh that i've met that are libertarians but i've also had some pretty horrible experiences with some extremely outspoken libertarians I mean not good ones where and, and I think that has formed my it's definitely <laughs> fueled my disdain for a lot of the people yeah. in, in the libertarian movement uh, because I, I want what happened is you know I, I started to move to all of these places and, and live with people who are libertarians and well-known and, and you know espoused or put forth publicly that this is how they live and this is what they believe in and then completely contradict it once you get to know them. Right. Um, and once you're living with them or in close quarters with them or interacting with them, uh, I've had a lot of negative experiences. And I don't want that to take away from the positive experiences I've had because I have amazing friends and, and even people who I don't keep in contact with all the time are still wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Right. Uh, but I, I definitely think that... Uh, Whew, man, like I said before, libertarian does not equal okay. good person now, in any way, shape, or form. I want to ask Mike a question. Do you think a large portion, or some of the uh, celebritarians, quote unquote, do you find some of them to be overly like dogmatic? I mean, they won't bend on certain issues. Um, I mean, we saw, I, I, I don't know if any of you guys are paying attention, but Tony Stiles posted something about vaccinations yesterday. Um, that, you know, 130 doctors didn't get their kids vaccinated, therefore don't vaccinate your kids because I guess, you know, doctors are impervious to uh, being wrong. Um, what, you know, what do you think? Clearly. Mike? Right? I mean, if a doctor didn't do it, you well, shouldn't I, do it either. What do you think, Mike? I, I think we're kind of ragging, ragging on libertarians a little bit. I, I mean, every every ideology has these people that are exactly the same way, and you can't evidence reason well let me cut you off there for a second mike let, let me cut you off for a second because libertarians look they look at the market they look at market for market forces which is somewhat scientific i mean it's really it's logical i mean it's a scientific method here we're looking at supply and demand i mean progressives socialists really have no argument when it comes to the economy and libertarians have picked up on it uh insofar as it's scientific i could we could look at it a posteriori and know that throughout history freer economies have worked better you can look at vaccinations in the same sense and say, look, scientifically, they do not cause autism. You're far better off getting a vaccination. But yet we still see, you know, uh, don't get your kids vaccinated because doctors don't do it. I'm just that loses me. How could you be so scientific and logical in one aspect and so dogmatic in another? I don't mean to let I'm not necessarily picking on them. I'm just wondering why there is that that dichotomy. I don't think I don't think a lot of these people that are dogmatic are scientific. Right. I think that they've taken, you know, Ron Paul talked about the Austrian school, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and so these people just kind of regurgitate those same feelings. And maybe they have a basic understanding of the market, but they don't actually go in depth with it. They're still dogmatic about basic market principles, but they don't apply the in-depth knowledge of the market the way other people do. And I think you can apply that to conservatives and liberals as well. Uh, maybe there's some conservatives. I, I've heard some liberal liberals actually that have had decent arguments that are outside dogmatic uh, uh, talking points right. about raising the minimum wage. But at the end of the day, it's like you can't really convince them with any sort of evidence. I mean, They've had their mind made up, and I think every ideology has those people. I can draw one graph and crush their argument for minimum wage. I mean, that's just – that's ridiculous. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know – where do they get? Are they just re, are they regurgitating to, talking points? Do you think Styles just says these are libertarian talking points? This is what people want to see, and then he puts up. I mean, this vaccination thing is just get it's out of control. I don't understand it. What do you think, Lucy? 
Oh, um, the vaccine thing, that's a whole other type of disinformation. I mean, Dan Beer, who, um, you know, I, I don't agree with on everything, but it's kind of an uphill battle for him with his whole skeptical libertarian thing, because right. there is a type of libertarian that does not understand, or not just libertarians, obviously, but like, they don't understand evidence, they don't understand, my mom is borderline this way sometimes, and she's actually also libertarian. You know, if if you're disavowing the the the, the you know the, the the big institution that is the state, and you're saying it's not necessary, you you get a type of person who tends to just think that well, the medical establishment must be completely wrong too, and if they're wrong, you know, on a few things, which they obviously are, individual doctors certainly can be wrong, then vaccines. I mean, it's just you're going from point A to point Z basically. Right. Those people, and they're taking skepticism. And they're twisting it into something that's not healthy in the most literal sort of way. I totally because agree. Measles, guys, and, and, measles. And, right. And to me, that's not classical liberalism at all, which is so rooted in the Enlightenment period. It's so rooted in reason and logic and, and empirical evidence and the scientific method. So I think they're really veering away from libertarianism when they when they do this stuff. I, you know, I, I just don't know. What do you think, uh, Josie? Do you think... Do you think some libertarians are overly dogmatic or, again, back to my earlier point, do you think they're dogmatic only insofar as it's a good marketing scheme to, to repeat these, dogma, these dogmas and mantras? Well, I think what happens is there are, there tend to be groups, like, you know, I, I love Skeptical Libertarian, one of my friends uh, runs that page and there are some there are sometimes when I see a post and I'm like, ah, oh, what a douche. But then later I'm like, it's kind of right. <laughs> um, yeah, but and then there and then there are other groups who are uh, they take the the question everything so far to right. the point that it's. Uh, I don't know where they stand. You're not even questioning it. It's not even like question everything. It's just. It's all wrong. All everything. <laughs> everything. Everything is a conspiracy. Right. And. When it comes to vaccinations, to be honest, I don't know enough about it. I haven't done enough research. Right. I don't have children. I don't. I, I've gotten, you know, I've gotten my the vaccines that that were required of me up until I guess I reached a certain age, and there were no more, and that was it. Uh, so at this point, I'm just kind of. I I wish I could speak more on that, but that's one thing that I am not well researched right. on. So I don't. I can't. Nothing I say has any scientific backing whatsoever. Well, here's the thing. At least, uh, at least you could admit it, Josie, because there's a lot of people that just obviously throw things up there, and they've never researched it either. So you're about ten steps ahead of everybody else. <laughs> um, oh, this goes to my next. Question. Well, that's the thing. If, if I don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just going to agree with your compliment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am amazing. Thank you. Trust me, Josie. <laughs> yes, I'm brilliant. Trust me, Josie. There's many more where those came from, okay? Mike, um, <laughs> this gets to my next question. The vaccination thing. Do you think, I mean, let's look at it, uh, I don't know, I want to say an originalist perspective that localities, can, can a locality through law mandate vaccinations for children? Uh, should the state in some regards, mandate vaccinations. What do you think? Are you, I'm, are you asking can they or should they? Because those are two. Well, no. Okay, questions. not can they? Because yeah, they can. By, yes. But what do you do? You think? Do you think they should? <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't think they should. I think that uh, it can be taken care of uh, by individual institutions in a decentralized manner. I think schools already do it. I think that a lot of companies already do it, and as long as as long as that happens, and as long as like there's widespread education about the issue, I don't think you need any sort of government agency to step in. The only way that you can make a case that the government should step in is if you can make a case for child abuse, and if you can't make that case, and I don't think you can make a clear case for that, then there's no reason for the state to step in. You can have a decentralized, uh, decentralized policy that you know, companies and schools say, hey, if you want to come into our building, work for our company or go to our school, well, you have to have a vaccination. That's a great argument. I think that works just fine. I like that argument. You just don't That's... have to be such a statist about it. Lucy, what do you think? <laughs> I know. I was busy agreeing with um, 
Mike on that one. The vaccine yeah. thing, like, it's, you know, it's it's similar to the, like, oh, what if, you know, super Ebola comes, like, is it okay to quarantine people forcibly? Like, it's just a sort of a milder version of that kind of question. And I think what Mike just said is a good solution to feeling really uncomfortable with mandating things, but also um, thinking that, yeah, let's not bring measles back, guys, because turns out it can kill you. Right. So. so it's a heavy dose of reason and logic in Michael's argument. It's a pretty good compliment. I wish I got a compliment like that ever. Josie, what do you think? Do you work on it? <laughs> I think <laughs> I think Mike nailed it. Uh, I think that if uh, if that started happening on a large scale, if uh, schools, doctors' offices, uh, any kind of public institution started saying you can. No, I wouldn't even say public, public and private, whatever. Uh, you know, you can't walk through these doors unless you've been vaccinated, kind of a thing. To make it very general, uh, then that that would solve the problem because not solve the problem completely. That's 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 a little too idealistic. Uh, but that would you know force parents to kind of look into places and send their kids places where either there are vaccinated children or there are not vaccinated children and both would have to face the consequences of whatever would happen, um, which I don't know because, again, I haven't done the research. Right. <laughs> so I can't say what would happen to vaccinated or unvaccinated. I will say this, that HPV vaccine to little girls at, like, age three is ridiculous, and I'm exaggerating, Look, but Rick I Rick Perry is a great like, man, eh. okay? I don't want to rip on Rick Perry on this program, okay? <laughs> he has Listen, really I'm great glasses. I'm just he's my hero, and he did really great the 2012 presidential uh, campaign. Okay. He's a hero, like Chris Kyle. They both killed a lot of people, so that's the true meaning. Of <laughs> I heroism. love the non. I love the nonchalance of Lucy. Yeah. She's like, I'm just gonna stretch and make my point a yawn. <laughs> All right. So just to recap, you don't mind the state making the correct incentive structure. For making it more prudent for parents to pick the course of uh, vaccinations for their kids, like creating the right incentive. Wait, what? Making the incentive structure, uh, <laughs> like you can't go into a public school or a public college without an MMR shot. You know what I mean? No, I, I get. No, I don't agree with the state mandating anything. I agree with pro like private private <laughs> places saying that. Okay, so uh, like, let's say. But, I just, but hold on, I, I'm not drunk ass. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. But I'm saying the state, like public schools, will say you can't come to a public school without having an MMR. <laughs> And if you don't want to go to the public school, go to a private one. If you know what I mean, that will accept kids without a uh, MMR shot. Uh, it, like it's sent. Yeah, I guess if it's up to, yeah, if it's up to each individual public school right, exactly. or like whoever. Well, the, it wouldn't be the super. The, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't be up to each individual. Right, people. like. It, I, I, go ahead. Sorry. Like if 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 the, if the federal government is like every public school is you know not allowing kids that haven't been vaccinated, I'd be like, okay, well, that's, that's, that's a little questionable. There's a gray area there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't have a specific answer. I'm just saying there's a goddamn oh, gray there. area. I keep cursing. <laughs> there is a gray area. I'm not denying that. But I mean, look, if you don't want to get, if yeah. you, there's consequences to choosing not getting your kid vaccinated. It's like, well, you know, maybe USC, a private institution, I'm sure they probably don't want you there if you don't have your MMR immunizations. Um, I don't see a problem with that. I don't see a problem with public institutions okay. saying they want kids. I don't. I mean, I, do I like? It's not really whether I like it or not. It's just really how we make these decisions. So. Well, let me play devil's advocate and say and pretend I'm like a scientist who's done all these studies and know all of the things. Well, did you, okay? you heard somebody. Know all the things. I've heard somebody at a bus stop say that vaccinations were bad, and that's science. So I'm a scientist. So go ahead. We're both scientists. In any for case. Today. Let's just say, and I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying I believe this because I do, I honestly don't know. But let's say it's a possibility that certain vaccinations can cause a lot of problems. Like you said before, there are certain consequences for not getting your kid vaccinated. Okay, well then, what if there are certain consequences for getting your kid vaccinated? Mm -hmm. What if? It's a cost what benefit. Fuck if, it's man? definitely a cost, just like anything in life. There are no solutions, only trade-offs. It's definitely a cost-benefit scenario. But I, the, the, exactly, yeah, and I agree. The, but the benefits, I. Someone has to provide the opposite. Someone has to provide no, a rebuttal. I, 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 no, I, agree. <laughs> no, I totally agree. I kind of want to move on a little bit. 
I want to move on. Well, I want to segue into Ron, uh, Rand Paul. And, you know, he made those comments about the vaccinations, but I don't want to get into that. That's that's too much. I want to get into like the, 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 the next presidential election. And I think we all we all lean a little that, bit. Because that's really safe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just gonna grab a beer. I'm gonna grab a beer. Yeah, go ahead. Go get a beer. You're gonna need one for this. Uh-oh. But I wanted to talk about presidential contenders in 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 2016. And I know we're all really libertarian. We're libertarian here. I'm very con- like cons- I call myself. Yeah, I'm very statist. So I don't know if I like anybody. Ew, in the are field. you? Ew, let's talk about that. <laughs> no, Let's no. talk about how you're awful. I want to learn more about that. I mean, I am an admin at being liberal, so therefore I deny reason, logic, and empirical evidence and substitute it all with repetition and feeling. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Oh, Again, that, that's, that's also that's science. So that's a science. Like every single friend of mine has trolled that page about Japanese internment camps and FDR, which I appreciate. Oh, who has? They're doing God's work. Who's done that? Like... 12 people I know. <laughs> trolling being liberal about Japanese Why? internment. No, that's totally okay. Am I not the, like, the ultimate troll of that page? The, I mean, yeah, I might yeah. be the biggest troll of that you page are the, all time. You do own the ultimate troll of being liberal. Yeah, you win. But I wanted to get back again to the 2016 presidential candidates. Uh, we're all kind of libertarian here. I don't really like anybody in the field. I certainly despise Chris Christie. I do not like Romney, thank goodness, is gone. Um, I like Rand Paul. Um, is there anybody? Uh, that's probably the only guy I like so far. Is there anybody that you guys have found, maybe not even within the, not even within the candidate realm, but outside that you would like to see run? I mean, I know there's status and everything, but somebody has to win. Um, Mike, what do you think? I'll go. I'll start with Mike, and I'll go Spooner? around. <laughs> yeah, we'll dig him out of the grave. Oh, I mean. I'm gonna. I'm gonna need a cigarette for this uh, one. Out of, the, <laughs> out of the people that have uh, been basically announced so far. Yeah, let's start with contenders, and then we'll move on to people that you can you can name anyone after that. But let's start with contenders. Presumed contenders. Correct. Out, 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 out we of don't the really contenders know. that we're we're assuming right now, mm-hmm. Rand Paul is the only feasible. I don't see anybody else aside from Rand Paul, it, and I don't think Rand Paul is perfect. But who who else are we gonna have? You know, you got Gary Johnson over there saying he's going to probably run as a libertarian again, but is Gary Johnson going to win the presidential election? No, he's not going to win the presidential election. So at this point, I guess, you know, Rand Paul is the only one I see of the feasible candidates that we've listed so far. Right. Okay. What do you think, Lucy? Who Do you do you like anybody in the field? Um, point out – well, actually, do me a favor. Uh, point out someone you do like in the field. You have to pick one person because that's interesting. And then point out somebody outside the field you'd like to see run. Well, I, I, my, my goal in life is to be the person in the American Letter Mail Company shirt who also is about to defend Rand Paul because that's – be radical, but, like, also the real world exists and right. Christopher Cantwell. Um, <laughs> Rand Paul is, you know, such – so annoying so often, but I'm sorry to, like, Scott Horton and certain anti-war people and other people who just hate him now, but, like, I don't think that he has yet – proven himself to be just as bad as everybody else. Mm. Rand Paul has pushed really hard on criminal justice and he did it before, you know, Obama and Eric Holder suddenly woke up and pretended they'd been working on it all along. Right. Um, I think that's how you know Rand Paul is better than the fray is that he has pushed on a really libertarian friendly great issue when, it, you know, he hasn't just followed like the, the, the winds of change. He's actually pushed on criminal justice stuff. And that... Right. And Basically, that is a reason to like him better than I want to talk about that. Yeah, everyone I like, else. Literally. I like that about Rand Paul, but what bothers me is you're in the federal government. Criminal justice systems left to the states. I get why he's doing it. I don't really necessarily love the pandering. Yeah, there's plenty to do. Uh, there's plenty state to issues. do at the federal level. And moreover, let's say that it is at the federal someone level. Has, it shouldn't someone be. has to get the federal government out of it. Right, but he's that's not what he's right, that's exactly. not what he said. I mean, but that's not what he said. He hasn't said that I want to get the federal government out of the criminal justice system. That's not – he didn't – I've never heard him say okay, that. Okay, that's federal that, – that, that's being – that's making a federal artist argument like in I abstraction. Wanna, I, want I want to hear a federalist argument. I want to hear we should – this federal government – I do too, but I don't want to sh- 
I don't want to shoot criminal justice reform in the foot, like with just to support the purity of federalism. This is how radical. This is how radical I am. Federal I don't want mandatory minimums. I don't want the federal I mean, government you have doing anything. People whose lives are ruined because of a federal war on drugs. I don't, there are things exactly. to fix. I don't want the federal government. To, I don't want the federal government doing a thing. I want the states and local governments doing it. I want to. I want somebody to have the guts to say it. That's what I'm saying. Now I'm not saying that I. I hate. I despise Rand Paul because of. Rand Paul is saying. Right. I don't. Isn't that what Rand Paul is saying? No. Rand Paul was saying something about incarceration rates and certain things, and it's like, man, that's you know, that's really that's up to the yeah, states. He's, Bob, I he's, get, saying, he's saying he's saying he wants to get rid of. He's saying he wants to get rid of federal minimum mandatory sentencing laws. Okay. Right. Which is exactly what you should. Federal. Want. Well, that I, exists. There's, but there's right good, now, ar there's good arguments insofar as cost benefits are concerned for federal minimums too. I mean, you're adding costs to certain actions with, with federal minimums. I mean, uh, the, talking about incentives Dude. and so on. There's good arguments for it, but it has to be a federal crime, of course, a crime against the not a not in a state. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not a federal crime right now. It's just federal sentencing guidelines. Right. So er and Rand Paul is trying to get rid of those. So you're talking about he's mit trying to mitigate the federal government. Thank in, you, in Mike. The Damn. But, he, yes. he, but that's not yes. what he's trying to mitigate the federal government. He hasn't all. said that all the time. He's yes, talked about is. incarceration rates uh, uh, within the states and changing because of because of because of sentencing guidelines. Right. And, but, because but, of federal sentencing guidelines. I don't know if it was solely because of federal, uh, but anyway, let's move along. Yes, that's exactly what he's talking. <laughs> okay. Um, but the, anyway, what do you think, uh, 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 Josie? Who do you like? Okay, so you do know. Who you have? On, I do. Who you have here, so, right? But you have to pick uh, somebody. <laughs> you have to pick someone. The state has their coercive gun to your head, and they're saying you have to pick somebody. And I will say, shoot me. I would, I would let them shoot me in the head before I pick <laughs> one fascist. They're all, they're all fascist puppets on string. Okay. So if they're, if they're going to try to force me to. <laughs> If they're going to try to force me to decide which one gets to rule me, I will say shoot me because I'd rather be dead so than be oppressed by either one you of them. You would deals. rather not show up than, than, than you, I think you said, a puppet master pulling the string than possibly mitigate the length of the string. Like, uh, you know. Uh, but the thing is, it's not. I don't think it's mitigating the length of the string. I think that what's happening is it, they're all going to do different things, different levels and different ways of oppressing people. No president that has ever been elected has ever given more freedom back to people. They've only, they've only I, I, I will tell you, there, there have only been more laws uh, restricting freedoms of people. Right. So, I mean, and even I, I've gotten the argument back saying, oh, well, what about the, the president that, you know, you know, Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery and this and that. And, you know, what about when the and, women got the right to vote? And I'm like, all right, cool. Well. Women got the right to vote for what oppressors? Cool. More people voting for people who are going to oppress them. I, I don't. Scootery, I, I honestly. Scootery, beautiful. Yeah, I hear a lot of. Scootery, I hear a lot of <laughs> I just, in there. I'm just being excited about that. I've and that's the thing. That. I've, that's really that's really flattering because I've never ever read any school. Oh. I oh, see a lot of like life. As long as you. Lysander, he wrote, this, as long yeah. as as long his, as you his read essay Mark, against you're good. women's suffrage is basically. Women are equal to, and this is, you know, the 1870s. Basically, his essay is women are equal to men, but they shouldn't vote because nobody should vote because voting is bullshit. Peace out. That's Lysander Spooner, and oh. he just made that argument, basically. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, oh, yeah, I don't vote. The, the, the most death threats I've ever gotten besides my uh, supporting the troops video, which actually does show, I mean, I, I, I show a lot of compassion for the troops. In any case, the, I got a lot of death threats. From my jury nullification video where I start out saying I don't vote and I don't think I don't vote. I know. Right. I don't. So, okay. That's I don't good. participate in it. This leads to my next question about this whole statism anarchy thing. Do you think sovereignty, okay. do you think sovereignty lies more with the ruling class? I mean, you talked about all these laws, laws coming from Congress. I mean, we've had, a, we've had an oppressive Congress that have delegated, that have delegated uh, lawmaking duties to the executive branch back and forth, do you think that they have really usurped sovereignty more so from the individual, uh, I mean, and taken more power from us? And whose fault do you think that is? Do you think it's just merely uh, the state's fault because they have coercive power? Or do you think we're responsible in some sense? What do you think, Mike? 
About what? Uh, sorry. Okay. About uh, anarchy. No, no. What do you think about insofar as sovereignty is concerned? I mean, the Constitution is a document that maximizes individual sovereignty yeah. over popular sovereignty. Okay. It 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 maintains sovereignty with right. the individual or the people. Do you think we've relinquished willingly yeah. the sovereignty to our elected officials, specifically Congress, the president, and most definitely uh, 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 the Supreme Court? Do you do you think we're at fault here, or is it all this quote unquote state's fault? I think the system's broke. I agree. I, I think that's the problem is that the system's broke. Right. It, it you no, know, you can say follow the Constitution, but the Constitution allowed us to get to the point where we're at today. But at the same time, I don't think anarchy is a problem, or not, anarchy is a solution. Sorry, because if you're if you're really an anarchist, the only way to be a true anarchist is that there is no natural rights. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no other way to enforce it, to, but to be a no natural rights anarchist. Okay. Is is the Constitution flawed? Yes, I think the Constitution is flawed, and I think that we've allowed the situation to get out of hand. But I don't think that having no state is the solution either. Okay, let me hit on that for a second. You said has the great thing about that is we don't need to talk. Of, we don't, we don't need to worry about no state or this state yet. We have a long way to go. Right. So you, there Lots needs of work to be to do. ameliorative steps. <laughs> towards lessening the state we have now. Is that what you're saying, Lucy? A couple of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why like, the Cantwell-esque people who want to kick right. out the minarchists drive me insane. Right. Guys, we're not there yet. <laughs> right. No, I... It's going to take a while. So you're saying... It's like talking about what... <laughs> it's like when a bunch of people at work talk about what's going to happen when they win the lottery tomorrow. So... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's a good one. So but you're saying... It's less likely. Let's be real. It's so less it's, likely. So it's a real absolutist movement. The, the anarchy movement specifically and some of the libertarian was very absolutist it's either the feds there and just abolish it rather than coming up with these steps in order to lessen the harm done on the economy you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean i know a lot of people certainly i kind of go ahead josie no i just i'm sorry i didn't mean it's to okay. interrupt you i just i kind of wanted to, to answer your question to mike go ahead. uh that you, know, you asked is it all the state's fault that it's gotten to this point uh, or is it our fault uh, collectively? Uh, and I think that it's definitely both because we all know the propaganda starts at a very, very young age. And, a, you know, minds are very impressionable. And you look at uh, public schooling and oh, religion and churches and, and all these these things that this propaganda that teaches you to just obey. Well, churches are voluntary. Churches are voluntary. Public schools, not so much. But continue. But uh, well, what I'm, yeah, what I'm talking about is the propaganda and the brainwashing that does begin at a very young age to teach you to just kind of obey. You know, you have children pledging allegiance to a flag and just reciting these words without knowing what they mean at a very young age, and. Uh, I think that that definitely plays a part because when you grow up believing something for so many years, it's really hard to let go right. of the fact that all of these people, your parents, your teachers, people who have taken care of you, that they may be wrong. Right. Uh, and then it, then you, you reach a point where we're in the age of information, clearly. So we reach a point where once this, uh, you know, information is thrown at you that, hey, maybe we don't have to be oppressed. Maybe we can fight back a little bit then people have a choice. Right. So it's, it's, it's definitely, I think, the fault of both. I think, I think there are a lot of variables and a lot of, a lot of different reasons that, that we still are here. Uh, but I think that right now there are a lot more people. I know five years ago I couldn't say, I couldn't speak about, you know, anarchy or voluntarism or however we want to talk about it, however you want to label it. I couldn't speak about that without people looking at, looking at me like I wanted to throw Molotov cocktails all over the place. Right. And now people, I think, are a lot more accepting of it. And, sorry, what? <laughs> uh, and I noticed that a lot at work, that I think that uh, a lot more people have uh, open minds. So anyway, okay. that's it. That was my answer for that. That's a pretty good insight. So are you saying that public schools indoctrinate? I, you know, I don't think so. God. Those should be held up on pedestals as, uh, you know, the, the greatest, uh, the greatest arenas of education in the world. Certainly not public colleges. They're they don't indoctrinate either. Actually, I get called an anarchist in, at my at Long Beach State all the time, but I'm really a conservative, <laughs> so I'm a statist. But they call me an anarchist. 
So anyway, no, I think college most is embarrassing these doctor, days, yeah. right? But anyway, we I got, think most schools indoctrinate. We have like 30 seconds left. I just want to say thanks so much for coming on. I had a lot of fun. Um, probably when we edit this, we're gonna have to bleep out a lot of what Josie said. You know what I mean? But it's gonna be just your bad, just the bad <laughs> words. <laughs> um, it was pretty insightful. Sorry. <laughs> and Mike, thanks again for coming on. And um. You know, you can stop inboxing me no all of your advances. Yes, I will go on a date with you when you come back to the United States of America. Okay? So stop asking me. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. And hopefully I'll talk to you again soon on the show, and we'll, do, we'll, we'll have a ton of fun. I'm really hammered, and I need to go to bed. Bye. <laughs> Bye.